Now, Chief Justice Raymond Zondo has again called for whistleblowers to be afforded protection. He was speaking at the Anti-Corruption Advisory Council yesterday in Boxburg. It's been two years since Babita Diokaran was shot and killed in her driveway after she blew the whistle on corruption in the Gauteng Health System. Joining me now is Babita Diokaran's brother, Rakesh Diokaran. Rakesh, thank you so much for your time. Of course, during this time, uh, you know, when we have summits and forums, etc., that speak particularly to corruption in South Africa, that's when we remember your sister. What do you make of the words that uh, the Chief Justice said yesterday? I mean, it's been more than a year since he received that report, that state capture report, and even then he was saying, take care of the whistleblowers. And a year later, do you feel this is happening? Mm, good, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to the viewers. Mm, I honestly feel and think that currently nothing is being done. You know, in most countries, whistleblowers are actually rewarded. But out here, whistleblowers, oof, they are taken out in the most heinous of manners. Yeah, and you can and, imagine. I mean, yeah, the meaning of a whistleblower is someone who comes forward with improper conduct or illicit activities. Um, and now that's a person of integrity. But And they need to be protected, as I've always said as well. Whistleblowers are a very rare species. So they mm. should be closely guarded and protected. Yeah, yeah. But of course, you know, there's many whistleblowers who'll say that uh, they've uh, been taken under witness protection, etc. But this also takes them away from their families, their loved ones, their children, etc. Uh, which is still sort of like a prison for them, isn't it? Yes, the rather unfortunate part here is that whistleblowers are being harassed. They're either being harassed, demoted, dismissed, mm. and in, in the worst case, killed in a cold and callous manner. Yeah, yeah. And I think for me also, uh, Rakesh, what worries a lot of South Africans is that the more cases such as your sister's happen and, uh, you know, are out in the public and even court cases don't get anywhere, etc., it just makes those good people in business and government be scared to talk because they become afraid that they'll, you know, they, they won't be taken care of. Exactly, 100%. There are so much of them there who, who would love to come out and expose improper conduct and illicit behavior. But they are just too scared to do so. Mm. And not just them, I mean, they're scared for their families as well. Mm. And your sister's case, I mean, the wheels of justice there, how do you feel about how it's going? Well, as I said, uh, after the last case, yeah. mm -hmm, that the apology was not accepted at all. Yeah. Because uh, not, not one of the six guys showed an ounce of remorse. And so I'm just waiting for the way forward now because remember they did come in with a plea bargain. Mm. So I'm waiting now for the state prosecutor um, to act on whatever information they have received from the plea bargain. Mm. Mm. And you know a lot of people have been saying the more than um, what 200 recommendations that were made in that state capture report by Chief Justice Raymond Zondo uh, more than a year later etc all those recommendations there's uh, many of them that South Africans are not seeing being implemented so I wonder what you thought of what the president said yesterday uh, he said he cannot be the one that actions the arrests the prosecutions etc uh, what do you think of that because at the end of the day the the, the recommendations in the report are for him to consider, right? Agreed. But remember, mm. um, in the case of Babita itself, yeah. so basically after the six guys were sentenced, it automatically becomes a new investigation altogether with mm. whatever information they have provided. So we just have to be patient and hope that the information that they have given would transpire into a proper case whereby, as I've said on TV before and in the media, that even though they were hitmen, the hitman does not hire himself. Mm. So there must be a mastermind behind it that actually paid them to do it. So until we get to the mastermind, then only would we get satisfaction. Yeah, and that's uh, actually basically true. And we saw reports of a report suggesting that the person who recruited the six men who pleaded guilty to your sister's murder was also murdered. So now it means you're even further from getting to the mastermind because the middleman seems to have 
been killed as well. That those are the reports. My biggest concern in that mm. day is that they could have just used a name, knowing that that person is already deceased, mm. and nothing mm. can transpire from that. Mm. So, but I'm hoping, apart from just that day, there was more information that was disclosed. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I mean, you know, for me uh, also, uh, Rakesh, I always uh, ask myself about uh, um, Babita's daughter. Uh, you know, the fact that uh, she had just dropped her off from school. But if you look at what she was trying to unearth at Tembisa Hospital and how long it took for people to be suspended there, uh, you know, uh, pertaining to, um, you know, her report into what was going on there, do you think the local government, Gauteng government, is doing enough? Are you in the loop uh, for investigations on suspensions, etc., in um, about uh, Tembisa Hospital? Would you like to be in the loop? Because this is something that your sister unearthed. We would like to be in the loop, mm. but with regards to local government, um, we are never in touch with them, or should I say they are never in touch with us. Mm. Um, it's just only the media that carried this forward, and that is why we are always, we will always be appreciative to the media itself. Mm. And I mean, I know that, uh, you know, you don't want your sisters, uh, you know, your sister to have died in vain. And that is why you keep shouting about the fact that this is why she was killed. Uh, you know, do, do you think she's being honored enough by government for the work that she tried to do and that, you know, it will stop with her, hopefully? Not at all. Absolutely mm. not at all. Why do you say that? Is it, because you believe, um, is it because you believe South Africa is just no. too riddled? with corruption like it hasn't been fixed totally yet. Mm. totally not. i mean it's rather unfortunate you know that she was assassinated but there mm. are still so many whistleblowers out there who have exposed corruption but to date nothing is being done about it mm. so what do you think then of um the uh, um uh, uh, event that is taking place uh, in Johannesburg and Boxburg since yesterday where the president delivered the keynote address. Chief Justice Raymond Zondo spoke. It's an event that is supposed to come with ways between government and business um, to make sure that South Africa is corrupt free. Do you think it's just another talk shop? I mean, the SIU is there, the Hawks are there. Is it another talk shop for you? If for me, it's just, it's just words. Mm. The only time I would believe in it is when I see action. Yeah, yeah. And I guess your action that you'd like to see, of course, is all around. Uh, thank you so much for Correct. speaking to us, Rakesh, and thank you uh, for your time here on ENCA once more. Thank you for always availing yourself to talk about this. Uh, I know that it does assist the family and hopefully even Babita Diokaran's daughter to know that, uh, you know, at least as the media, uh, we won't keep quiet about what exactly resulted in her death. You might remember that she was shot and killed in the morning after dropping off her child in the south of Johannesburg. She had just tried to unearth information and had a dossier of what was happening at the Tembisa Hospital with contracts and the siphoning of money uh, there uh, by uh, some who we haven't seen being arrested, but of course at least the six men who were arrested for her murder uh, did end up pleading guilty. And as you heard from Rakesh, they are trying to get a plea bargain uh, in terms of their sentence.